How do you measure the height of a building? How do you do that? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. How to measure the height of a building using physics. Now, you can also do it using trigonometry. And I'm going to post a link in the description section below for those of you who are interested in seeing how to do it that way. But let's work on this problem. A rock was released from rest at the top of a building. 15.1 seconds later, a sound was heard from the rock striking the ground. How tall is the building? So let's say this is the building and this is the ground floor and here's a person and he releases a rock from the top of this building. Now, he doesn't throw it down. He simply releases it from rest. So the rock is going to fall down under the influence of gravity. And when it strikes the ground, it's going to emit a sound that's going to spread in all directions. Now, as that sound wave travels back, this person, who I forgot to draw the head of, he's going to hear that sound. And he hears it 15.1 seconds later after he drops the rock. So with this information, how can we determine the height of the building? And we're given the speed of sound at this temperature. By the way, the speed of sound is approximately 331 meters per second plus 0.6 T times the temperature in Celsius. So the temperature matters because the speed at which sound travels through air is dependent on temperature. So if you were to plug in 25 degrees Celsius into that formula, so if you type in 331 plus 0.6 times 25 in your calculator, you're going to get 346 meters per second. So that's going to be the speed of sound in this problem at that temperature. Our goal is to find the height of the building, which we'll call H. What formulas do we need in order to solve this? Now, we need to break up this problem into two parts. In the first part, the ball is falling. And the time that it takes to fall, let's call it T1. During the second part of the problem, the sound wave is traveling from the point of impact to the person's ears. And the time it takes for the sound wave to travel back, we'll call it T2. The total time for this whole problem is T1 plus T2. And that's going to be equal to 15.1 seconds. So we'll save this formula for later. Whenever you get a problem like this where you have multiple variables, you're going to need to use a system of equations in order to solve it. And for this particular problem, we're going to need to use the quadratic equation as well. But let's save this formula. We'll, we're going to come back to it later. Now, let's focus on the first part of the problem when the ball is falling down. How can we calculate the height of the building, or at least write a formula for the height of the building during the first part of the problem? Now, the ball is fa falling under the influence of gravity, so we have constant acceleration. One kinematic equation that we could use is this one. By the way, for those of you who need to know the kinematic formulas, I'm going to post a link in the description section below that has a video with these formulas for those of you who might be interested in, in it. But we're going to use this formula. The displacement is equal to V initial T plus 1 half AT squared. Now, you could use this as displacement. You could use it as distance. And you could still get the right answer. If you use it as displacement, because we're going down, displacement is negative, And you'll have to use a negative acceleration. If you're going to use it in terms of distance, distance is always positive. So you'll have to use a positive acceleration to make that work. So just keep that in mind. 
So the displacement during the first part is going to be equal to the height of the building because that's how far the ball is going to travel. Now, V initial in the y direction, because the ball is being released from rest, V initial is going to be zero. So we have H is equal to one half AT. The acceleration is going to be 9.8. That's the acceleration due to gravity. And since we're going to use a positive value for H, we're going to use a positive value for A as well to make this work. So we have this formula. The height of the building is going to be half of 9.8, which is 4.9 times t squared. And this is going to be t1 squared, since we're focused on the first part of the problem. So we're going to save this equation. Now let's write an equation for the second part of the problem. That is when the sound wave is traveling back to the person's ear. Now, the speed of sound for the most part is moving at constant speed. It's not accelerating. So whenever you have an object moving at constant speed, you could use this equation. The displacement is equal to the velocity multiplied by the time, or the distance is equal to the speed multiplied by the time. The distance traveled by the sound wave during the second part it's going to be equal to the height of the building. So we can replace it with h. The speed of sound is going to be 346 meters per second. And the time it takes to travel back, that's going to be t2. So we have this equation. So because both of these equations is equal to the height of the building, we can set them equal to each other. So 4.9 t1 squared is going to equal 346 times t2. Now right now we have one equation and two variables, so we gotta do something about that. And that's when this equation is gonna become helpful. Let's solve for t2 in this equation. If we subtract both sides by t1, we'll get that t2 is equal to 15.1 minus t1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace T2 with what it's equal to there, 15.1 minus T1. So I'm going to have 4.9 T1 squared is equal to 346 times 15.1 minus T1. So now let's solve for t1. But first, we need to distribute. So let's distribute the 346. 346 times 15.1, that's 5,224.6. And then this is going to be minus 346 t1. So notice that we have a quadratic equation. And we need to put this equation in standard form. So I'm going to take all the terms on the right side and move it to the left side. So moving this term to the other side, it's negative on the right side. It's going to be positive on the left side. And moving this term as well, it's positive on the right, but it's going to be negative on the left side. So now we have this equation. And as you can see, it's in standard form of a quadratic equation. AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero. And here's the quadratic formula. X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A. But instead of X, this is going to be T1. So T1 is in place of x in this problem. So 
So T1 is going to be equal to negative B. B is the number in front of T1. So B is 346, A is 4.9, and C is that number. So this is going to be negative 346 plus or minus the square root of 346 squared minus 4 times A. A is 4.9. And then C, which is, let's see if I can fit this, negative 5224.6. I could use a bigger screen here. And then divided by 2 times A, A is 4.9. So I'm going to simplify this first. 346 squared minus 4 times 4.9 times negative 52. 24.6 so I got this number 222,118.16 and this is going to be divided by 9.8 and if you take the square root of that number you should get 471.294 now we're going to get two possible answers here So the first one, we need to use the positive sign. And for the second one, we'll use the negative sign. Negative 346 plus 471.294 divided by 9.8. So you should get 12.785 seconds. Now for the other answer, we need to use the negative sign. Negative 346 minus... 471.294 and then if you divide that by 9.8 you'll get negative 83.397 seconds and of course time shouldn't be negative so we could scratch that answer we could eliminate it so now we have our value for t1 and if you want to check to make sure it's correct you can plug it back into the original formula but now, let's take this answer and let's calculate the height of the building. So it's going to be 4.9 times T1 squared or 12.785 squared. So I got 800.9 meters. So we could say the height of the building is approximately 800 meters. Now we can also calculate it using the other formula. H is equal to 346 times T2. But first we need to calculate T2. T2 is going to be 15.1 minus T1. So if you subtract those two numbers, you'll get that T2 is 2.315 seconds. And then if we plug it into this formula, so 346 meters per second times 2.315 seconds, the unit seconds will cancel, giving us the height in meters. You'll get the same answer. I got 800.99, so it's about 801 meters, but if you want to round it to one sig fig, you could say it's approximately 800 meters. If you want to round it to three sig figs, it's about 801 meters, because the time was in three significant figures and the speed was in three sig figs, so this is going to be a better answer. But now you know. So that's how you can calculate the height of a building using physics. What you need to do is after you drop a rock from the top of a building, you need to measure the time 
it takes for the sound wave to travel back to your ear. So once you drop the rock, you start counting the time. And then once you hear the impact of the rock, then you stop counting the time. You also need to make a note of the temperature so you can determine the speed of sound. So with the speed of sound and the time it takes for you to hear the sound wave, you can calculate the height of the building using physics. Now, as a reminder, if you want to see how to do it using trigonometry with a whole different setup, feel free to check the links in the description section below. Thanks for watching.